Welcome to laboratory assignment number four. So uh, let's do SPSS application number one together, and then you can do the next two independent t-tests on your own. Um, okay, so the first one reads, six months after an industrial accident, a psychologist has been asked to compare the job satisfaction of employees who participated in counseling sessions with the job satisfaction of employees who chose not to participate in counseling sessions. The scores on a job satisfaction inventory, that's just like a survey, for both groups are listed in the table below. Use SPSS to determine whether the job satisfaction scores of the group that participated in counseling, and we're going to label them number one, group number one, are statistically different than the scores of employees who did not participate in counseling, and we'll label the people who didn't participate in counseling group number two. So, number one says to describe the experimental design by answering the following. So, the first question is, what is the independent variable? And the independent variable is what's being manipulated between the two groups. So, we have um, counseling um, versus no counseling, essentially. So, I'm just going to write counseling as the independent variable because we have the uh, group that went to counseling, group number one, and then the group that did not go to counseling, group number two. So that was the manipulation. And then the dependent variable is what's being measured. So what these numbers in your data set represent. And so they represent job satisfaction. So I'm going to write job satisfaction there. Okay. And then identify the level of measurement. So again, I just look at my data set, um, read the experimental design and make sure that I'm able to understand it correctly so I can identify what the appropriate level of measurement is. So here they said they collected scores, um, scores from a job satisfaction inventory. So scores are normally collected in the form of numbers. So I am going to conclude that this is in fact interval data. Okay, and then I am going to state the null hypothesis, which is the hypothesis of no difference below. And so I'm just going to write, there is no, and that word no um, is key here because that lets the reader know that this is the null hypothesis. There is no significant difference in job satisfaction. So I'm going to put the DV first, the dependent variable first. There is no significant difference in job satisfaction between those, oops, those that participated in counseling and those that did not. Okay, so there is no significant difference in job satisfaction between those that participated in counseling and those that did not participate in counseling. Okay, that's good. And then um, it says, what statistical test will you use? And so because I have um, one IV interval data, I have two separate groups that are not dependent on each other in any way, like the second round of scores are not dependent on the first round of scores. It's not a pretest, post test design or paired, matched, repeated measures, none of that. It's just two completely separate groups. So. I am going to do an independent t-test um, because I have two groups, interval data, it's a hypothesis of difference. They want to see if there's a difference um, in job satisfaction. All right, and then um, what statistical test am I going to use? So going back to that word difference, uh, this hypothesis does not make an, a prediction about which group is going to do better than the other group or worse than the other group. Um, so it's not a one tail test. They actually just ask if this group's going to be different than that group or this group different than that group. Are the groups different? So when it just asks if they're different, but you don't see any directional words like higher, lower, better, worse, um, and just see the words like different, difference, or any you know variation of that, then you have a two tail test. So. We have a two tail test here because of that word different. And then down here it says use SPSS to determine if the researcher can support their hypothesis. So I'm going to need my data for that. And I'm going to come over here to SPSS. And on the bottom right tab, I'm going to click variable view. And then I am just going to label my variables. So I'm going to label the first one or name the first one job satisfaction. And I'm going to change the decimals to zero since there's 
bowl numbers on my data here. And then for the label, I'm just going to do status. Uh, there we go. All right. And then in the second variable, I'm going to write the word groups. And again, I'm going to change the decimals to zero because I'll be reporting those in whole numbers. And then just put groups again as the label. And now I'm going to click data view. Um, pull this column out a little bit. Okay, so for job satisfaction, I'm actually going to put all of the values for group one and all of the values for group two in this column. It's going to feel weird, uh, but that's how we do it. And then we come back to SPSS and tell it which value goes with which group. Um, so I'm going to start by entering in the um, values from group one. And then I'm going to enter in the values from group two, starting with 37. Okay, so now I have to tell SPSS which uh, score belongs to which group. So I put the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values in. So I'm going to label them all with group one because all these values belong here to group one. So I'm going to do number one down to uh, the ninth row. Okay, and then the rest were number two. So 37 through 32 were number two. Okay, so now I have my data entered and my next step is to run my independent t-test. So I'm just going to go to analyze, compare means, and then um, click on this independent samples t-test. And um, then I'm going to pull my dependent variable into my test variable box by just clicking on it and then the arrow and doing the same with groups down to the grouping variable. So just clicking on it, make sure it's highlighted and then click the arrow and it goes into the grouping variable. After I have it in the grouping variable, I'm going to click define groups and I'm going to tell it what I called group one and I was real creative and called group one number one and then I called group number two number two. Okay, I'm going to click continue and there is no option as you see even if I click options to enter in if this is a one tail or two tail test. So um, SPSS just defaults to two tail. So I'll show you um, what you're going to do when you get a one tail test. But the results that we're going to get now are based on a two tail test, which works out good because we're doing a two tail test for this application number one. So um, I'm going to click OK. And my output's going to pop up. So I'm going to begin by expanding my output a little bit. Make it easier to work with. And then I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to put lab assignment four and maybe I'll make it a little bigger uh, oh. and bold okay and then for where it says t-test I'm just going to put um, SPSS application number one so I have them all separate and organized and clear what's what okay so um, if I come down here, well, first of all, up here, I can see that I had nine people in group one, nine people in group two. The mean for group one was 38. The mean for group two was 35. Standard deviations are next to that. And then standard error of the mean is next to that. Uh, down here, I can ignore these first two columns that test for equality of variances. Um, we're not going to pay attention to that. And then if you come to the... Um, the column labeled T and the equal variance is assumed row. So we're looking at the top row, the equal variance is assumed for our um, dependent variable satisfaction. So uh, the T is given in the first row in the column labeled T and we're going to round to two digits after the decimal. So we, were, we would call this 2.45. We have 16 degrees of freedom and then we have a um, significance level of 0 0.026, which we would just round to 0 0.03. So I'm going to report all of that here on my worksheet. And to do that, I'm going to put lowercase t and then my degrees of freedom. I don't want that to autocorrect. Okay, cool. 
And then my degrees of freedom. So my degrees of freedom are, again, under the DF column on the top row labeled equal variance is assumed. And for this problem, it is 16, 16 degrees of freedom. And that equals a T value of 2.449, which we are going to round to 2.45. 2.45 and then I'm going to put a comma my p-value the equal sign and then this significance level which I'm going to round to 0 0.03 so 0 0.03 okay and then I'm going to come back and just italicize my statistical symbols so that I am compliant with APA format it keeps messing with my teeth okay there we go all right, and so now I'm going to state my conclusion. So I am going to reject HO because of this p-value, which we wrote as 0.03. So as long as this is below 0.05, I'm able to reject HO. Um, if you have trouble kind of conceptualizing the probability values, I think it helps to think of it as like dollars and cents. So this p-value would represent three cents, and what you're looking to find in order to reject HO is five cents or less. So here we have a P equals 0.03, which is less than five cents, so I can reject HO. Um, and so I know I can reject at P less than 0.05, but can I do better? Can I reject at P less than 0.01? And the answer is no, because three cents is more than one cent. So P uh, equals 0.03 is not less than 0.01, but it is less than 0.05. So P less than 0.05. And then the question is, is there a significant difference between the sample and the population? And so I would check yes. The reason I check yes is because I rejected HO. All right, so uh, moving forward, you're going to do number two and number three on your own. And if you feel that um, one is a one-tail test or they're both one-tail tests, then what you're going to do is you're going to run your data, you're going to get you know, the results on your output, get your t-value and your degrees of freedom like normal. And then when you get to the significance level, you actually just have to divide it in half. And so whatever half of that is, is going to be your appropriate significance. So I would um, you know, round this to... 0.03 if I were report, reporting this one and so then my um, if I were to divide 0.03 in half I would get 0 0.015 as my significance level so I would round that up to 0 0.02. Okay so that is it for SPSS lab number four.